Okay, getting back to it. So I have been trying to uh, upload videos a bit more routinely than I have in the past. Uh, but the past few weeks, I've had a, a couple of failures, uh, which I did capture on video, but decided not to um, not to upload them. Uh, number one, I was trying to put shelves or a shelf in the V-Birth, um, which I, I didn't care for the way it was coming out, so I abandoned that idea. Um, and then I uh, was working on the emergency starting of the engine, the Yanmar 1GM10 engine that uh, I was going to use with this lever, but the lever itself was too short, so I made this extension out of copper piping, which turned out to be uh, not not hardy enough, so I, um, I'm going to revisit that at a later date. So trying to get back on track here, I'm going to try and fix this hatch leak. Um, I believe it's been leaking under the teak trim. Now I have uh, tried to re-bed it here uh, a number of times actually, um, but I found that the leak is actually coming from underneath uh, the teak. Um, I've actually even tried sealing it from the outside with uh, 4200 or similar, um, but that only only stems it a little bit. So. I'm hoping that someone didn't bed this with 5200 or worse epoxy because if that's the case I'll destroy it taking it off uh, but let's see what happens so looking here on the underside there are several screws all the way around holding in the teak base which you can see here so let's try removing those first Okay, got those all out. Uh, for some reason, I noticed that some of these screws are much shorter than the others. These represent the ones fore and aft. So I'm guessing that's because the teak base is much thinner here. Yes, that is the case, much thicker here. So that's, that's the reason I have to keep those in order. Next, I'm going to remove the screws in the flange of the hatch itself. Uh, because I'm not sure if these are just going into the teak base or if they're going all the way through into the laminate. So probably wise to take those out, even if I don't take the hatch off, which I hope not to, since there's a whole lot of butyl tape in there, uh, which would just create more work. Got all of the flange screws out. Um, also had to take apart the hinge to access these screws that are in here because I'm not sure if they're going into the laminate and now for the hard part so you can see uh, there's a little bit of 4200 here and I say the hard part because I've tried this before uh, when I was in the water um, to uh, address uh, a leak that I believe was coming from here um, but I was in the water so I was probably uh, less uh had less initiative to get this done than i do now being on the hard for the past two years um so i'm going to try to work this in there if i can get it under maybe see if i can work it around um, and uh hopefully i'll have some success famous last words ended up removing that hatch flange and all its butyl tape anyway sticking to me so the way i'm going about this after finding that the corners are actually not attached, they're just mitered together. Um, I'm actually kind of tapping this in there between the fiberglass and the teak. Uh, this is some kind of chopping knife, I think. It's got a uh, some Japanese writing on it, I'm not sure what it's actually for. But anyway, I get it under there, then I take the claw hammer and pry it up a little bit, move this down, Push it in, move this down, pry it up, and just work my way along. Final piece. Not too bad. So the part of this was made more difficult because of the bit of fairing that I had done here a few years ago. Not sure what episode that was, but uh, got it off. 
I'm not sure what this stuff is called, this pinkish, reddish stuff. It's not butyl, and it's not any kind of caulking. Uh, I finally got it off, so I'm going to clean that up. There's a few splinters here and there, nothing too terrible. Clean this up. Maybe even do a little bit of sanding. And then there's a little bit of uh, pre-existing cracking here. And do something about that also. And with that, I did a bit of sanding to reveal what's under there. And it looks like somebody did some pretty shoddy uh, uh, repair job here. The, any of this red stuff is actually probably the fairing compound from when I did it. But uh, I'm not sure how long ago this was done. Looks like I have some uh, fairing to do. Okay, next step is to fill the voids that were left when I kind of dismantled that. So I put this uh, blue tape on there to form kind of a dam uh, for the epoxy that I poured in there. Um, first layers actually already set up, but this was uh, slightly thickened, but uh, it ran here, so I'll have to sand it off. But now I came back in a day later, put in some much more thickened epoxy uh, so it doesn't run. Uh, filled the rest of the voids on three sides, and I'll let that set up for a day. And in other news, <laughs> uh, the teak base, uh, I have liberated it from its butyl tape, uh, which is quite tedious to remove. I just scraped it and then went over it with uh, some mineral spirits to get, to get it off. Uh, and then sanded it, and this is what I have. So um, one revelation, however, is that I don't believe the leak was coming from underneath. Instead, I think it was coming from the joints. Uh, there's no, there was no sealant or butyl or anything between the joints. They were just varnished. So I believe that's where the water was getting in from. Um, so the next step is once this epoxy is set up, I'm going to str screw that down into its screw holes, and uh, just so that it's aligned, and then come back and epoxy the joints together to form a watertight uh, joint. And then I'll take it off and varnish it. And so it went. I removed that tape uh, and sanded it down all on top and on the edge. You can actually see where it filled in those voids over here too. Um, and then temporarily screwed down the teak base and epoxy those together with some thickened epoxy. Uh, and then once that sets up, I'll take the screws out, give it a little sanding, and varnish with CETOL. And there it is, varnished with three coats of CETOL, uh, 24 hours apart between each coat. Um, there's some little gouges here, I'm not sure why they're already there, but uh, no matter, that's going to be filled in with butyl tape. Also, I painted the opening here where I did some epoxy work as well as under here I sanded a little bit and painted where I had all those cracks uh, with um, cabin coat okay next it's time to get this bedded and now I've got that bedded down so I screwed it down from underneath uh, but could not get enough compression to use butyl tape so I use 4200 and just cleaned up with mineral spirits. But uh, you can see a nice bead. I've already cleaned it up. And that should be watertight. And of course, the last part was to bed the hatch itself with butyl tape. And I screwed it down. That'll continue to squeeze out for a few weeks. So that should be it. Um, I'm quite confident this won't leak again. Uh, I did, I did actually take an extra precaution here under the hatch. I noticed the frame is actually very close to the edge of this. So I, I put in some uh, 4200 in all of the corners just as a preventative, but I'm, I'm quite sure that'll work. So 
so that's it to recap uh, i had a mystery leak coming from that corner the upon taking off the base frame teak base frame i found that the corners were not sealed together they weren't epoxied or anything so i epoxied them uh rebedded the frame and rebedded the hatch and uh that should be good